does it make a woman selfish if she chooses to never get married and or have any children? There are women like Oprah who attributes her success to the fact that she never got married and or raised any children. And as a result, she was able to give the world more of herself because she did not invest that into any children. And so she was able to conserve that energy for the world. Does that make a woman selfish? And what about some of the other challenges that come with being a woman, such as having a monthly menstrual cycle? Should women ensure that they benefit from the uniqueness of being a woman by making sure they have children to utilize their fertility and even their nurturing abilities by having a husband and a family. If a woman chooses to just focus on herself for her entire life, why does that bother some people so much? This conversation about your singledom, yes, right? Yes. So as I said, you were on a TV appearance, you made a joke that you were taking applications. You got off air and men literally started sending to my agent, to my publicist, VJ Coleman. <laughs> yes, but some of them forgot the picture. <laughs> I said, you know, all that talk ain't gonna matter. You know, let me see what you look like. And yeah, they, they sent in actual, like, I'm from such and such, I do this, I'm this height and yeah. everything. So they sent applications, which is flattering, right? Because if yeah. you hear Vivica A. Fox is looking, <laughs> I can't blame them for sending an application. <laughs> But then these headlines started yeah, with, went, finally, oh yeah, now she's looking and she's waited all this time. The negativity I felt yeah. started yeah. and you saw it. Yes, I did. Um, it, was, it was a joke, as I told you when we talked on the phone. It was literally a joke. I've said it, but yeah. for some odd reason, because I was turning 60, I think they, they thought I was serious. And listen, let me tell you, it's not that I can't get a man. I got plenty of suits. <laughs> I want to make that clear, okay? All right, let's just get that straight. Ain't right. nobody sitting over here home right. alone and desperate. Because if some of the people tried to spin it like, oh, now she's 60, yeah. she's about to settle, poor her, no. she doesn't want to be alone. No. And you're like, no, no, you're assuming I'm alone. Yes, yes, that's, that's a, wrong a bad assumption. Right. And you know what they say about assumptions. <laughs> so you started getting into your mind, dissecting yes. why this went viral. Well, like you said, I think people think that I'm alone and that I'm like, you know, desperate for a man. And, How did and that make you feel? Uh, I didn't care. <laughs> I mean, yeah. because I, mean, I hate to say, I know me, and I know I'm so booked, busy, and blessed in that order. Right, right. <laughs> so yeah. then, so while. Like you said, you didn't care because you have a foundation. I but do. you do understand how other women are hurt by oh, this yes. when there's an assumption about you being over a certain age mm -hmm. and that somebody doesn't want you or that something is wrong with you. Yes, or that something's missing. That something's I, missing if yeah. you don't have children. So you empathize yes. with women who are feeling this frustration. Of course I do. Because, it, like, why do you not think we're less of, of less value yeah. because we don't have a mate or that we don't have children you know um, you guys gave me some stats that there's like over 40 million single women right so obviously we okay right right <laughs> okay so obviously we're okay um, what several years ago in an interview Vivica Fox said that her biggest regret was that she never had any children shortly after that she started to stop saying that. And you saw in interviews that um, when the topic would come up, she would say that she's fine not having children, that she has six guy children, and she is very pleased with that. I'm curious if Vivica Fox is being honest. And it does seem like Vivica Fox expressed some vulnerability when she said that, that was having not having kids um, is her biggest regret she seemed to express a level of vulnerability that she later regretted. And so instead of allowing people in to kind of see that part of how she really feels, it seems like she, she uh, closed the door. And understandably, because perhaps she didn't want to be that vulnerable. But I think this is such an important thing to think about. You know, why is it that women who never marry, women who don't have any children, um, 
why are they so uh, disliked in society? Uh, one of the women featured on Tamron Hall on this ep this particular episode, she's posted something on Instagram saying she's 37 years old, never married, no kids, and she started to get threats on her life. So there are people who get very angry, and um, and even if they don't get angry, they just get irritated and annoyed by women who are living their quote best life um and you know with no kids um oftentimes you see these women traveling shopping um you know doing all the things and you know maybe perhaps posting a lot on tiktok and instagram uh beautiful views and things like that and i think a lot of times it, it's hard for people to really understand why they chose that path and and even more so for the women who are happy or who at least they say they're happy uh you know being single and being childless it is really hard for the public and um, a lot of people to accept and why is that and that's what i want to deal with in this video what do you think is at the heart of it though? This is not a new conversation. Yes. I remember uh, at my old job, I was going to be the only woman on that show who did not have a child. Mm. And I remember an executive telling me that, oh, I'm not relatable. Oh. Uh, she's no longer in the business. <laughs> but, exactly. <laughs> but, and that didn't come from a man. That came from another woman and I who got, said my problem was I was not relatable because mm, I didn't have kids. I got asked one time at a woman's convention, so Vivica, you have all this success, this, that, that, but you don't have any children. I said, oh, I got children. I got six godchildren. And all I got to do is spend an afternoon with them. Right. And trust me, I'm good. <laughs> but you this know? happened at a women's... <laughs> Right, it's like, which is crazy. And that it, went viral, believe it or not. I remember. Yeah. And it happened at a women's conference. Yes, it did. So, you know, let people live. Yeah. Let people live. Let, let people live. You know? A lot of times, again, when this topic comes up, the question is, are people even be being honest when they say, oh, I'm good, the fact that I never had, had, had kids? Or is it that your fertile window has passed and you, you know you can't have a child biologically or naturally and it's so it, it doesn't make sense to continue to um beat yourself down about it so you just say i'm good with the fact that it never happened so that's something that you know i, I wonder and i wonder if that's the case with vivica uh given the fact like i said that has said that her biggest regret was not having children and so it makes me question if well maybe that is still true that, that not having any kids is her biggest regret but she can't do anything about it now. I mean, granted, she can adopt uh, and things like that, but other, you know, outside of maybe foster care or adoption or things like that, I mean, at 60, it's, you know, very unlikely that a person would have a child uh, naturally or biologically. And so, unless they had their, you know, there, there are ways you can do it, but you would have to have some eggs in the freezer and uh, a surrogate willing to carry the your your child. So. Um, so, so that's, that's one thing that I think is people question, is this person being honest, you know? Um, and then also the single part, you know, a lot of women say, I'm, I'm good being single. I prefer to be single. And the fact that I never married and I'm 60 doesn't bother me. And again, I think as people, as humans, we are judgmental, even when we don't want to be and our brains question whether this person is being sincere and a lot of it has to do with the standard what is the societal standard what are most people doing what are most people trying to do and anytime you have an outlier or someone who does not it does not meet the social norm then yes that will come with uh, uh potential judgment and it doesn't mean that it's right it doesn't mean that it's okay for people to judge, but it just means that that is what people do. And, you know, there's a lot of examples I can use. One being, you know, there are people who get degrees and then they decide that they just want to, I don't know, work at a, a fast food uh, place or, you know, Walmart, a department store, or something like that. And, you know, of course, they're going to, if people find out that they are educated, they have a degree, the question will become, why are you choosing the work here? 
And that person does not have to explain why they have their own reasons. But the reality is judgment will come upon them. I don't necessarily think a person who has decided not to have children and to never get married um, gets should get any special treatment outside of the groups that I just named. I think it's just another example of a person um, not meeting societal society standards and therefore as a result running into various judgments and Tamron Hall seemed to imply that she believes that well um, I guess you know women who choose not to have children or who choose not to get married should not be judged but that is unrealistic because the reality is we are all judged. All of us are judged constantly, whether we like it or not, whether we know it or not. And again, like I said, I don't think just because you are a woman who chose not to get married or chose not to have children, I don't think that you warrant any special treatment. If the person who is overweight is getting judged, if the person who, again, has an Afro is getting judged, the person with a degree working at McDonald's, that person is getting judged yes, it is going to come with some judgment if you choose a lifestyle that is, um, again, like I said, not necessarily, necessarily the societal or the world standard, right? Because we're not just talking about an American standard. I mean, across the world, and most people progress through life. You know, you finish school, you get a job and, uh, you know, you find someone, you get potentially get married, have children. Now, again, uh, some people miss steps. Vivica <laughs> talked a lot about monetary things, saying that she's looking forward to sitting in her backyard, drinking coffee and um, going in her pool. I, I guess now that she's older, she was just kind of talking about how she wants the next so many years of her life, what she wants the next so many years of her life to look like. And she also uh, talked about like having properties and she talked a lot about her career and all the various blessings that she's that has have been bestowed upon her, which is great. But I think the general sentiment, and this is going to be worldwide, right? This is not is that those things are great. However, a lot of people would say those things are not um, enough, right? Money, having a nice house, having a great career for some people. It is not enough. Really, I'm not approaching this from a biblical standpoint. Um, there is an argument that can be made biblically. You know, we should be fruitful and multiply. If that is the stance that I had decided to take in this video, uh, this video would sound a lot more judgmental, but that is not the stance I'm taking. I don't make um, that. I am a Christian, but I don't necessarily make Christian content. So I'm not going to take that stance, but that is another argument in terms of why uh, women who choose to be childless and not marry, that's another argument, um, and you know, is that they're not fulfilling the, the their, their feminine duties as the Bible would uh, state it. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think that again, this is a very good topic. And one thing to know is that the, the the statistics are changing. Uh, things are changing for modern women. And so as time goes on, uh, the reality is that more women are, you know, saying that they don't want to get married. More women are saying that they don't want to have children. However, it, you know, our brains still have not caught up. We still, you know, have an expectation that women are pursuing marriage and children. Um, and so one of the stats here says that uh, this is a percentage of childless women in the United States in 2020, 46%. In the United States, there are uh, 46.8% of women uh, were childless. So 25% of 40 year olds in the United States had never been married as of 2021. Okay, this is a record high, 25%. So it's still not the majority. Um, All right. So it says that um, according to the last census, one in five United States women between the age of 40 and 44 are childless. Okay. And this is among the high achieving, so to speak, women earning uh, $100,000 or more.
Let me know what you all think about this. Like, share, and subscribe. Click the links in the description box and get to know what I do with my business, Curated Legacy LLC. Join the Black and Invisible YouTube membership and purchase my book about being an invisible Black woman on Amazon. This is Naka here, and I am here to make the invisible visible about modern Black women. And I highlight the things that Black women would never tell you. And as always, stay tuned for more videos.